Good manners are about respecting yourself and others. They will make life more enjoyable for you and for those you come into contact with. If you are well-mannered others will be more comfortable in your company. People with good manners will usually make a positive impression on those around them. They can help us appear more confident, maintain more fulfilling personal relationships, lead to us prospering at work and generally enjoying happier and healthier lives. Here are my top 10 must-have manners. Number 1. Saying please and thank you. When you say please and thank you, you're displaying kindness and respect. While that's a sign of proper manners, that's only half the story. When you make the effort to do small things well, you are much more likely to do big things well. That's because taking pride in what you do is habit forming. When you say kind words to others it makes them feel good and positive. Which in turn, makes you feel good and appear more positive. Number 2. Sending thank you notes. If someone does something for you or gives you a gift, traditionally a note of thanks is sent to the giver to express your gratitude. Well, a thank you note may seem like a small thing, but it carries a big message of appreciation and gratitude more than any text ever has. When you show gratitude, it is a sign of good manners, and the giver will most likely give to you again. Number 3. Holding doors open for others. Why would you hold a door open for someone else? You hold doors for others to minimize collective effort. Next time you are in front of a building with a steady crowd going in and out, sit back and watch for a few minutes. Some people hurry through the door. Others hold the door for the people behind them. It is an act of common courtesy that you can show to any person whether they be man or woman. If you get to the door first before a man, holding the door open for him is completely fine, and a gentleman should always hold the door open for someone who is more physically burdened than him. Try holding a door open for someone, and you just might get a smile and a thank you in return. Number 4. Silencing your cell phone during public events. Mobile phone etiquette is vital in public places, as inconsiderate users can be a great disturbance to others. In places like a restaurant, the office or on public transport, you should turn down the volume of your ringtone or set the mobile phone to silent or vibrate mode to minimize disturbing others. It is rude to be chatting away around other people, and please don't ever use your speakerphone in public. No one wants to be involved in your conversation. You will appear selfish and disrespectful by creating noise pollution and distract people from what they are doing. Please show respect and keep your private calls private. Number 5. Practice good table manners. Table manners make eating with others a pleasant experience. There is nothing more disturbing than sharing a meal with people who eat with their mouths open, drum their fingers on the table, and have no idea how to act properly while dining. Dining regularly at the family table will help you teach your children proper dining etiquette, something that will help them as adults. Proper dining etiquette is essential for dating, workplace dinner meetings, and all kinds of social functions. Different cultures observe different rules for table manners. Each family or group sets its own standards for how strictly these rules are to be followed. Using manners at the table is all about taming impulsivity. And because willpower and self-restraint are recognized predictors of success in life, they are worth nurturing. Remember to practice your fine table manners the next time you eat with others, and they will notice your level of respect for them. Number 6. Make eye contact. It's a common courtesy to make eye contact when we are talking to other people in person. It makes people feel like they matter and their words matter. And it makes us feel that way when people look at us, too. Our eyes show how we are feeling and help us connect more personally with other people. Too little eye contact may make you appear uneasy, unprepared and insincere. In work environments, employees often keep their eyes down when the boss is asking a tough question 
or if it appears that he or she may ask for volunteers for a work assignment. Lack of eye contact shows and might hold us back from achieving what we want and hinder potential relationships. Number 7. Knowing how to make introductions. Greeting someone you know is a vital part of courtesy and goodwill. All societies have some form of greeting. They are basic to civilized interaction. The first point about greetings is to do them. It is important to say hello even when you feel a bit cranky or shy. It's also important to make introductions even when you're not certain of precisely how it should be done in that situation. Every greeting and introduction is an opportunity to demonstrate respect for others and to create a favorable impression of yourself to others. Number 8. Put others first. Our culture teaches us to put our needs above others in the spirit of looking out for number one. Putting others' needs first is countercultural, but reflects good character and integrity. For example, teaching our children manners gives them the opportunity to defer to others and learn to look out for their needs first. Simple things like offering the other children to pick a popsicle first, suggesting the other child choose the game they will play, or inviting the other kid to pick a show to watch. All of these things look like good manners, but underneath, it's a discipline in serving. Number 9. Apologizing. Apologizing helps repair relationships by getting people talking again and makes them feel comfortable with each other again. A sincere apology allows you to let people know you're not proud of what you did and won't be repeating the behavior. A sincere apology shows grace and good manners. That said, you still might have a difficult time letting the other person know that you feel bad about your actions or what you said. Just remember that once you've apologized and the other person has accepted it, you can move on and stop worrying about whatever it was. Number 10. Being kind. Kindness is defined as the quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. Affection, gentleness, warmth, concern, and care are words that are associated with kindness. While kindness has a connotation of meaning someone is naive or weak, that is not the case. Being kind often requires courage and strength. Have you ever noticed that when you do something nice for someone else, it makes you feel better too? This isn't just something that happens randomly, it has to do with the pleasure centers in your brain. Doing nice things for others boosts your serotonin, the neurotransmitter responsible for feelings of satisfaction and well-being. So it not only shows others respect, but can scientifically help your brain in the process to be kind to others. It allows us to connect with other people and build meaningful relationships. When someone does us a kindness, we feel connected and more willing to cooperate with them. When we do something nice for someone, we cultivate trust, and we feel good about ourselves for being a kind person. Kindness is of infinite value, but is always to be felt and shown as a way of respecting another person. But manners are more than words or actions. They are a deliberate way to show respect, care, appreciation, and remorse. In short, they are integral to social skills, without which we can't form or maintain relationships, collaborate with others, or behave in civil ways. Proper etiquette communicates what kind of person we are to other people. It is hard to miss it when someone is courteous and uses good manners. Their behavior reflects what kind of character they have, and people take notice of it. Try to practice good manners always. It will come back to you. Thanks for watching this video about manners, and if you don't want to miss any other videos about self-improvement, subscribe to my channel.